Hey everybody, I hope you're all having a good day. Uh, this is my performance from Thursday night at the NEA Comedians Monthly Open Mic Comedy Night at Cregan's Downtown Jonesboro. Uh, it was actually a really cool night. We had nine total comedians show up and get up on stage. That's the most that have been in it since I've been going, and that's that's really, really cool. So props to every comedian that got on stage, whether you're watching this or not. Um, <clears throat> anyway, though, this is my time from that, and I want you to see it. I hope you like it. I think it turned out pretty well. Um, in the meantime, let me know down in the comments just exactly what you think and what you'd like to see done live next time. Be sure to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So let's start the show. Got a job, got a job, got a job. What do you do? What do you do? I work at Dillard's. You work at Dillard's. So you have to deal with people a lot, right? That's, that takes some skills, some sort of qualifications. There's not necessarily classes on it, but you gotta be qualified to deal with people all the time, right? Yeah. Right? You know what I do? I'm a janitor. <laughs> now, now, I bet you had to interview to be, to work at Dillard's, right? You did, you had to interview for that. I had to interview too. And I understand why you would have to interview, but why would a janitor have to interview to, to clean? I mean, in all honesty, guys, for a janitor job, there should be just like a little online questionnaire. I've got three questions on it, okay? Question one, have you ever murdered anybody? <laughs> question two, will you ever murder anyone in the future? And question three, when can you start? <laughs> it's that simple. But no, they, they make you take time out of your very busy unemployed day <laughs> to go to an office somewhere and talk to some people and they always ask you one question. What's the question you always get in a job interview, no matter what job it is? Anybody know? Anybody know? What makes you qualified? Not quite, but that's a good guess. The one question they always ask is, why do you want this job? Why do you want this job? And see, the problem is, is my answer was, I want this job because I don't want to have to take out a loan just to come up here and talk to you for the gas, you know? <laughs> right? But yeah. you can't just say that you want it for money. And this, this question freaked me out, going into my first job interview. It freaked me all the way out. I asked my mom, like, what do I say? What kind of answer do I give them? She goes, well, just tell them you need a job. <laughs> she thinks. Bryce, why do you want this job? Uh, cuz. <laughs> yeah. That ain't, that ain't gonna fly. You gotta make up something, right? You gotta make up something. Something like, um, I want the opportunity to be a part of something bigger than myself. <laughs> to guarantee that people of this community may take a dump with the peace of mind to know that no drop of urine shall defile their butt cheeks during their time on the toilet. To uphold the common core values of cleanliness. One scrubber in a toilet with liberty and justice for all. Did I tell you that they'll be in touch and send you on your way? And you wait like a couple weeks to a month and then they tell you that they can't hire you because you have no experience. <laughs> that. I hate that. One of the biggest burdens though that I've had about having a full-time job and working all the time, it's not really dealing with other people, it's not really dealing with coworkers, except unless you have a new person to join your team. Anybody ever have a new person join your team? Yeah. yeah. It's the worst, isn't it? Because they don't know anything, do they? They can't do nothing. They can't help you with nothing, and it's not their fault. They just don't know. You gotta be patient, but some of them make it hard. We had a person that joined us last spring, I think it was uh, about April, maybe May, and she was there until about December when she got herself fired. I don't look at it as we're getting herself fired. I look at it as the university giving her an early Christmas break. I think it was a nice little gift, person. But no, she, the whole time she was there, she learned nothing. 
She, didn't, she never understood how to do our job. Never. We, we couldn't, we, it's like we just couldn't get through to her. She would stand there every day and go, I'm confused. <laughs> what was it I was supposed to do? <laughs> well, I just watched you. <laughs> she would stand there with her hands in her pockets, just staring at you, watching her. <laughs> it's the creepiest thing. It's like I was being watched by a female Michael Myers. I didn't like it. We couldn't trust her to go up and do something by herself. She might go up to the third floor to deal with a, deal with a spill, and then you you come to check on her in about an hour or two hours because you wouldn't have heard from her. Come to find out, there's orange juice all over the third floor. I don't know how she did that. Now here's a true story about it. One day she was cleaning bathrooms and she ran out of toilet paper, or she ran out of medium bags, and she stuck small bags in the medium trash can. I don't know what the plan was, but here's my guess. I'm guessing she was trying to plant the bags hoping they would grow up to medium size. <laughs> they won't do that, now I'm going to tell you why, because no sunlight's going to get to the bag from down there in the can. It's basic biology. You guys have been great, Jonesboro. Thank you so much. My name is Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.